Hi, I'm Dan and welcome to the Airbrush Garage. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, thanks for coming back. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to airbrush a real simple wood effect. Last week, I painted the cardinal on this birdhouse. I'll pop a card above if you'd like to check that out. But today, I'm gonna to show you how I made these signs look like wood. And basically did it with a few simple colors and a stencil from our tool. It's the FX2 texture template. And this one, they give you three stencils with this or templates. And this one is called Liquid Trail. So I'm gonna show you how I did that. So if you're interested in seeing that, stick around with that. Hope you like this video. If you do, please consider subscribing. Hit that bell so you get future notifications. Give me a couple comments, good or bad. It really helps out with the YouTube algorithm and help me build this channel. Don't forget to check out all my Amazon affiliate links for all the products I use in this video down below. With that, let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna start off with some Createx Wicked Opaque White. I like to give things that I'm trying to color over a nice coat of white or opaque white. I'm gonna use a little bit of this yellow to my advantage for this effect. So I'm not gonna go crazy you know, with the coverage. Just a couple light coats. Next, I'm gonna come in with some detail yellow orchid. Now I'm just gonna kind of spot that in a little bit. I'm not gonna have any kind of consistent layer. Just so you know, I'm you know dust it in lightly. You could even build up, you know, darker areas, leave some areas a little darker, hit them, you know, once or twice more and leave some light. All right, so here's where we pull out the Liquid Metal FX2 template by Art Tool. And it's made of like a, a light poster board. It's not plastic. So as you can see, I'm having a little hard time getting it in, but you'll see how flexible it really is. Now again, I still have this you know, attached to the outer edges. I know a lot of people might say they take it out of here. And as I do things like this, it may even fall out of there. For now though, I'm gonna keep it in there. It's just a personal preference. But it just gives you a good example of how I'm really stretching that template and twisting it around and it's really holding itself together and it didn't tear so it is pretty durable. I'm just spraying that yellow orchid in a little bit just kind of spotting it in. When I do an effect like this I don't really have you know, specifics in mind. I'm kind of just going by how I feel. So I know there's going to be, you know, some people out there say, you know, well, that's not the colors they use for wood. That's, that's fine. But as you'll see in the end, I'm really happy with the effect that this achieves. And these are just how I was kind of going with the flow. So now I'm going to go with a Wicked Brown. I'm going to bring my template back in. And the cool part about this is when you're bringing it back in, you're not lining it up anywhere exactly to where you had it before. So you're gonna get, you know, a textured effect. So the colors are gonna cross over each other and that's what I'm looking for. Again, just kind of dust it around, spot it in. Just 
kind of feel it out. You could always go back. Again, by moving our template just a slight bit, we're going to create an overlap effect on the effect itself. So it's going to be building texture in a different spot previous to where you just had it. So now I'm going to come back in with some detail black. But I'm not going to come back in with the black straight. I'm going to take it, I'm going to put one drop into my brown just to darken it up a little bit. Black is a strong color, so be careful. So you can go too dark. As you can see, I'm mixing it up right in my cup. And I'm just gonna use this for, you know, spot this in, where, especially probably more along the edges where you can see the effect I'm going for, a little bit of like a burnt wood look around the edges. So it's still looking pretty yellow at this point. So I'm going to come in here, I'm going to darken up my edges. Now I'm just going to dust over the whole thing. And it's just going to darken it up a little bit. It's not going to darken it up as much as the edges because it's going over all of those other blended colors. So now I shook up my detail black and I'm just going to pull out a detail hand brush and I'm going to use the paint in the lid here. And the detail hand brush is a three slash zero brush. I had the letters engraved in the sign. And I used a little Dremel tool to do that, so that's just going to be my guide. Now when you're using a brush like this, you just really want to use just the tip of the brush. So be careful for how much paint you put on the brush. It requires a very light touch. As the black letters go on, it almost tends to darken the wood behind it a little bit to give the illusion of it. So it's really important not to go too dark, even though it looked a little bit on the yellow side before the letters started going on. It's important not to go too dark. If you do need to darken it up, even after the black letters are on something like this, again, the paints are transparent. So you can hit over the top of it and you won't even affect your letters. Well, there you have it.
Well, there you have it. A real simple airbrush technique to transition any object into looking like wood. So I hope you learned something. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please hit that bell. Give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Couple comments, good or bad. Really appreciate it. Don't forget to check out those links for all of these products that I use in this video down below. And with that, we'll see you in the next video.